Hello, in this tutorial we will talk about tunneling, a very common issue in physics simulations. Modern computers are digital. This means they can only work with discrete systems and variables, that is, things that are made up of countable pieces instead of one smooth continuous representation. In the real world though, many variables are continuous. This means we need to chop them up into pieces for a computer to be able to digest them. One such variable is time. Time is continuous, but in a computer simulation we need to chop it up into pieces. When rendering a game, each chunk of time is called a frame. The amount of frames we can draw per second, or FPS, largely determines how smooth the game feels. I'm sure you're all familiar with this. When simulating the physics of a game, time must also be chopped up into what we call simulation steps or time steps. Here we have a particle, which could be a bullet, a box or anything in our game world, moving towards a wall. The green circle is its current position, the red circle is the position it will be in in the next time step. So let's advance the simulation a few time steps. In the next time step, the particle will hit the wall. We know this because it overlaps the wall geometry, so we can correct the next position by taking it out of the wall. Consider what would happen if the particle was traveling faster. It would take larger leaps in each time step. We could find ourselves in a situation where the next leap is larger than the width of the wall. The physics engine would not see or detect any overlaps between the particle and the wall, and so the particle would pass right through it. This would also happen if the wall was thin enough that a slow moving particle could jump through it in a single time step. This problem is what we call tunneling. It's a very common problem in games as it is inherent to the way computers work. All existing physics engines are affected by it to some degree, even professional engineering grade engines. Several methods exist to reduce tunneling. The obvious one is to make the leaps smaller. This can be done by limiting the maximum velocity of our objects. This works fine, but sometimes we just need fast moving objects. Let's see. This basic equation tells us that velocity equals distance over time. So distance equals velocity times time. This is great news because we can reduce the distance covered by an object during a time step by either reducing the velocity or the time step size. So let's try reducing our time step. This will chop up time into smaller pieces. To ensure no tunneling ever happens, not even to lightning fast objects, we'd need to use extremely small time step. Having many tiny time steps increases the amount of work our computer has to do, so our simulation would take a lot of real world time to be calculated. We don't want our game to slow down. So both methods, reducing object velocity and reducing the time step size, have drawbacks. Some clever folks invented something called Continuous Collision Detection, or CCD for short, to help with tunneling without having to settle with slow moving objects or slow simulations. OB uses a state-of-the-art CCD system that not only takes object geometry into account when detecting collisions, but also object velocities. This completely eliminates tunneling in 90% of the cases. However, there's a few situations where not even the best CCD system can prevent tunneling. Consider a bucket filled with particles. Now we suddenly teleport the bucket from one time step to the next. The physics engine can predict this movement, as the bucket did not have any velocity it was teleported instantly as far as the computer is concerned. So many particles that were inside the bucket during the previous time step are now outside of it. This is precisely what happens in Unity when you move objects around by changing their transform directly instead of applying forces to them. 
Again, OB comes to the rescue. The OB kinematic velocities component will perform an approximate velocity calculation for teleporting objects. Now that kinematic objects have a velocity, the CCD system can kick in. Nonetheless, if the objects teleport around very quickly, or if the particles are very small, channeling can still take place. Up to this day, designing your game around tunneling remains the best recipe against it. If your game absolutely needs small, fast-moving objects and CCD isn't enough, you can reduce your time step as a last resort. 